how they won it too. Like, I think teams really need to look at the Dodgers. They don't chase. They don't strike out. They put the ball in play. I mean, th- their two runs late in the game when they scored two in the eighth, both on sack flies. Yes, you knew Mookie Betts was hitting a sack fly. One hundred percent, dude. Hit that was you knew it. You just knew it. Coming in hot, Chichi. What's going on, man? Season is over. Season is over. Sean Casey's grinding through this one, man. You're, you're in about as much pan, pain as Yankee fans right now, and you're just, you got a cold. You got Dude, a cold. I, I'm a little under the weather, but, uh, you know, that's why I, m- mom and dad, that's why I didn't come over last night. Just a little under the weather. <laughs> I didn't even watch a game last night, Chinch. I, 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 I mean, obviously, I've looked at the highlights, looked at everything that went on, but I watched the first couple innings and I just went to bed, but. I, you, yeah. I could tell you were crushed last yeah. night. Well, <laughs> hey, you know, uh, as a former member of the New York Yankees, it wasn't it wasn't anything that you would have wanted to see. It would have made you feel a little more banged up after that. But, hey, at the very end of the day, the Los Angeles the Dodgers might have had one of the greatest playoff runs in the history of baseball, beating the Padres, who may have been the best team in baseball, right. beating the Mets, who were definitely the hottest team in baseball, yeah. then going in – and and facing the Yankees, who are the Yankees, you know, with the all all the aura, but they had a, everybody was hot, except maybe Judge going into that series, and full credit to Mookie Betts, to Freddie Freeman, to Doc, uh, to the pitchers. They, they, they had five pitchers on the DL, dude. Yeah. Five starting yeah. pitchers. Yeah. What, what's your take? Well, you're right, Chinch, on all that, man. Um, you know, I, I had, really quick, I have to think about, you know. The Dodgers, I mean, you look at Doc Roberts and what he did this season. That might have, it might have been the best managerial run he's, that he's had with all the injuries that they had. The fact that Jack Flaherty was their number one at the end of the year is, is incredible. Like, if you told me at the beginning of the year with that rotation, Glass now and, and Stone and even, even Miller and uh, all those guys, Yamamoto, and if you'd have told me that, uh, that, Jack Flaherty would, would be starting game one of the World Series. I'd said you're crazy. So, I mean, you've got to give Andrew Friedman in that front office, you know, did a great job of, like, going to get Tommy Edmond, going to get freaking uh, – going to get Jack Flaherty when they needed it. I mean, they, they, they put some pieces in that, that they really needed, and uh, they did an incredible job, dude. You're right. The Padres might have been the best team. And that the Dodgers bullpen basically took it upon themselves and said, no, we're going to win this series. We're going to shut these guys down. That's the only reason the Padres aren't here. The Mets were smoking hot. And that, that series went to six games, could have gone to seven. And the Dodgers, you know, they came out, you know, said, hey, listen, we're, we're, we had the best record in baseball for a reason. And then they went, you know, down 3-2 in game one of the World Series in L.A. and uh, found a way to win. And I think when you look at this team, they find ways to win. They're never out of it. And Freddie Freeman comes up with a big grand slam. And as the series went on, I mean, it could have easily been 2-2 last night going into game five. But it was 3-1, you know. And, and then last night, they're down 5 nothing, And they come running back, scored five in the fifth, I believe, in that you know, tough inning for the Yankees. And then they find a way to win it. And, and, and Chinch, how they won it, too, like, I think teams really need to look at the Dodgers. They don't chase. They don't strike out. They put the ball in play. I mean, th- their two runs late in the game, when they scored two in the eighth, both on sack flies. Yes. You knew Mookie Betts was hitting a sack fly. 100%, dude. Hit. That was, you knew it. You just knew it. And dude, he, like, fuck. as a hitter, you're taught, get the ball up, get it in the air. How many times nowadays do you see a guy on third, less than one out, one out, less than two outs, and they don't get the guy and they punch out? You know, it's, it's so painful. So when you look at the Dodgers, you're like, Okay, they got some star power. I mean, Otani was pretty much a non-factor. You're talking about Judge yeah. struggling. Otani pretty much struggled worse than Judge did, but nobody said anything because they were winning. But, you know, you go back and look at that, that, that team, and you're just like, they do the things that good baseball. They played good baseball. They run the base as well. They play great defense. They put the ball in play. They don't strike out. They, they move a runner over. They, they, they get the guys in when they have to. You know what I mean? Like, 
Kike Hernandez the other night laid down a bunt with first and second no outs. Like, when I look at this team, I go, that's, that's actual baseball. I don't want to say old school baseball. Like, no. They play the game the way it's supposed to be played, and they're holding up the World Series trophy. That's the difference. At the end of the day, when you look at the Dodgers, that, that's what they did. I, I, t- I think that's a great point, an absolute great point. You, you cannot say enough about this team. This is one of the greatest postseason teams of all time. And then if you look at the guys on their roster, it, it might be one of the greatest baseball teams of all time. you got to give them credit for that. And, and, and the fact that you finished the job, you know. Like, there's a lot of teams that have really great rosters that put it up there. Harold Reynolds made a great point last night. He goes, yes, you can spend all the money, but unless you spend the money right, it doesn't matter. And I, I thought that was a great point because they did. They spent the money in the right places. And they. W- the other thing they did was they just kept adding depth to that roster. And they didn't miss a beat when guys went down all year and in the postseason, you know, show for Shohei Otani. To have, you know, almost like you said, like a non-existent World Series and them still kind of boat racing right. is, is a is a major point. And it's a credit to Doc Roberts, too, because like you said, he's one of the best. He, he might have put himself in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, oh, the, he's closing in on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, also too, Chinch, you go up and down that lineup. It wasn't Otani this time in a five-game series in the World Series. It was Betts. It was Freeman. So they, they have that depth there. But it was Tommy Edmond. It was Teoscar Hernandez. You know what I mean? It was these guys that, you know, it was Kike Hernandez. You know what I mean? It was these guys that like, oh, that's a nice piece. That's a nice piece. Oh, when it, when it became time to, like, win a world championship, the, all those guys showed up. Yeah. So, you know, it was pretty incredible. And, you know, on the flip side, dude, I can only think back to my experience, you know, in the World Series uh, you know, back we lost in five games of the Cardinals. We were one. We were one one with the Tigers. Uh, when I was with the Tigers, we were one one. We, we we split in Detroit. Went to St. Louis. Lost three in a row. We had eight errors in five games. And at the end of the day, when I look at the game last night, or I, look, I think back to me playing in the World Series, like you can't give one extra out. It's got to be twenty seven outs. You can't give the best teams in the world another play. And when you go back to that fifth inning last night, they gave them three new, three extra plays, and they, they paid for it with five runs. Not like a run or two runs. They paid for it with five runs, and that, was, that turned out to be the ball game. You know, when I look back at, at that uh, World Series in 06, I'm still proud, though, bro. I got an American League championship ring. I look back at my career and go, I made the World Series. Like, I, you see how we're talking about the, the Dodgers, what they had to do, run the gamut of the Padres, Mets. Do you know how many things have to go right to get to the World Series and then to win it? And there's so much. And I know the standard in New York is so high. I get it. But the New York Yankees should look in the, themselves in the mirror and say, you know what? What a run that we had, too. I got to the World Series against the Dodgers, played a tough series. I mean, it doesn't look like it because they lost in five. But that, that series could have swung either way. Here and there. And, uh, you know, Judgey had an MVP-type season. Volpe had one of the greatest moments of his career, of his life in that Grand Slam. Um, you know, Aaron Boone did a great job with that team. They hadn't been to the World Series since Giancarlo, 09. Giancarlo Stanton became a Hall of Famer. Dude, Stanton might have etched his etched himself into Cooperstown if he gets the 500 home runs. So, like, mm-hmm. a lot of things happen for the Yankees. I think they'll look back at that year. And when they look back at their career, and I know in New York you think World Series are bust, but as a player – it's tough to get that World Series, dude. So you got to also look in the mirror and say, you know what? The body of work, the work that we did, the hard work that we put in, we didn't get it done at, at the highest level of winning that championship, but they won the American League, they were in the World Series, and they gave the fans this year a, a thrill of a summer. Case, what's that What's that lid you got on right there? Dude, you kidding me? It's my favorite hat. You know me, Chinch. I'm, I'm, I'm a hat snob, dude. I really am. This is my new melon hat. I've had it for a few months now, dude. It's incredible. It's super comfortable. The one thing I love about it, too, you know, sometimes you wear hats all the time. They get those sweat stains. This hat doesn't okay. get a sweat stain. It's got unbelievable comfort fitting. It's, it, it fits perfectly with the snapback on the back. It's, it's, uh, five times more durable, I think, than any other hat I've ever had. So, man, this hat's incredible. The melon hat, man. you gotta get, you got to get a couple of these, brother. Yeah, dude, I've heard about them. It's like the most premium, durable headwear in, like, the whole world. And, you know, people use them for tailgating, working out on a golf course. You're going golfing later today. Yep. Heading out for date night with Sarah. You- 
you throw the melon cap on, right? Am I right? I wear it for everything, dude. The only thing I can't wear it to is premium restaurants where they're like, okay, you got to take your hat off. So other than that, I'm wearing my melon hat pretty much everywhere. Dude, it's my new favorite hat. I've been wearing my melon hat for the uh, past few months straight, dude. No sweat stains, what I said. No smell. Looks the same as the day that I took it out of the box. I get a ton of compliments on it every time I wear it. It's even better. They have different options for different weather. If it's warm out or it might be jumping in the pool, lake, or ocean, you need their Hydro Collection, bro. The Hydro Collection is next level change. You'd love that. But when it gets cold and you need to stay warm, don't worry, brother. Melon has you covered there as well. They have a full thermal collection with different levels of warmth to keep you on whatever you need for when the winter's coming up, brother. Big time. Nice. So if you're looking for hats as tough as you, my man, check out Melon. You won't wear anything else after you get one on for yourself. And I know I've been loving my Melon. Yeah, listen to Sean Casey, folks. If you're looking for the world's most durable hat, look no further. Go to melon.com. That's M E L I N.com and put it to the test yourself. Yes. I agree. And uh, for all my friends in New York here, please do not open any newspapers today because it seems like <laughs> you would think that they had the same record as the White Sox this morning uh, in New York. <laughs> Shake it off there. Okay, one other thing we have to talk about, though. After the game, post-game, everybody's going up to Juan Soto. Dude, I think if you squinted, it was like Scott Boris was doing the post-game show. <laughs> he was like, yep, I love being here, love being a Yankee, but everybody's got a chance. Like, he was extremely professional. First of all, he deserves whatever he wants to do because he's one of the greatest players on the planet. But What, is it, what does he get, Chinch? I think it goes to 800 now. I think we're in What? Yes. But dude, but dude, Otani's a pitcher too. He's not 26. Just turned 26. Ooh, good point. Good point. This guy's the best hitter in the I'll say this. Okay. I just He's go. Not better than Judge. I agree with that. But I do say this. When he would come to the plate, it's like, you remember when you play video games back in the Nintendo games? and like, Oh, yeah. Baseball stars. Hitter? You knew you were going to get hits from your three and four hitter in any yeah. of those games. Whenever Juan Soto comes to the plate, it's almost, it's like different. It yeah. really is different. And he's such a, he's a baby, dude. He's he's in his early, mid 20s. Yeah. That, he doesn't waste a pitch, dude. He doesn't waste a pitch. He, what did Aaron Boone tell you when he yeah. was on with us? He goes, forget about first game of the season. He's like, first, first step out of spring training. The guy was an animal. Yeah. So I think he gets 800 million. Wow. <laughs> I really do. Well, here's the other thing, Case. Dodgers are in, Phillies are in. Do you think the Do you think the Dodgers are in? That's what the reports were a couple. Oh days my ago. God! The so listen, Dodgers are in. Listen, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, New York, and New York all competing for you. It's supply and demand. Oh my God! Those are the big dogs too. They deserve the eight hundred as, com as compared as compared to Shohei Otani who pitches and hits. No, but it's supply and demand. Yeah, you're all right. Those teams is going to get him. It's you're crazy. Right. I was thinking, I used to think five, now I think six. Mm. But you saying eight, I understand what you're saying. It's a good point. Like supply and demand. You got the, and the 26-year-old figure is big. Yes. That's it. I mean, that, that's, that, that's what makes you like, oh, but he's not a pitcher. Yeah, but he's 26. Right. He's already won a World Series. He's battle-tested the, the, the postseason that he had, the year that he had. You're right. I mean, he makes everybody else around him better. Yeah, and he's not – and don't forget, like, it's not like he's a speed guy that's going to lose his speed. It's not like he's a, a super power guy that's going to lose his power. He's like – I feel like he can, for the next 10 years, be the same Juan Soto, dude. He's a top five MVP, one, two, top six MVP three times already. Uh, this was his age 25 season. He's already got 201 home runs in a regular season. I, I don't know, dude. I, I mean, on his career on his percentage is 421. Is that good? Wow. Is that wow, good? It's really good. <laughs> I was going to okay. I was going to say too, Chinch, I'm trying to find it. Um he also one thing I love about Juan Soto, he posts every day. He wants to play 162. You know, those are the guys if I'm a if I'm a GM or I'm a president or I'm an owner, I'm looking for the guys that want to play 162. Because you're gonna, the reason Juan Soto puts up numbers mm -hmm. is because he plays every day. 
Yeah. And, we, you know, a couple of times he was banged up this year. I think his knee, I think he slid into the wall one time or his elbow. Yeah, and he still played 157 games. Dude. There you go, 157. If you're playing 150, dude, you're elite. If you're Nowadays, if you're playing 150, you're elite. 157. And every year he does that. Yep. And so – I, now I know I'm, I'm getting a guy that posts every single night, not a guy that just, oh, he had a good year. He put up some good numbers. I'm getting a guy that his track record says he wants to play 162. He wants to be out there every night. When you're a manager and you can put a guy like that in the lineup and know that this guy wants to be out there, man, that's a – kidding me? That's an unbelievable bonus. Can you imagine if he goes to the Dodgers? No, I can't. Honey? I can, but I can't. Soto? <laughs> It's not, it's not outside the run. They showed us that they, they can do it. They can figure out a way to sign guys. I don't know where that money comes from, and I don't, I don't know what. I mean, their, their payroll is going to be like a gazillion dollars, but they spent a billion dollars on two guys, and guess what? It was worth it. Worth How it, that? exactly. How weird it's is that? It's anyway. And they won it. They, you, hey, you spend a billion dollars to win the World Series. And they got the international community in Japan. Oh, big time. I mean, everybody's watching the games out there. I mean, just, you know, I'm sure it was worth it. It was definitely worth it. I can only imagine. Man. Imagine those people in Japan. It was like 8 o'clock in the morning, and they were just grinding out at bars. It was really I cool. Know, they're just having some, some poor old beer and give me some <laughs> eggs on the side. Sushi. <laughs> nice. All right, man. Well, you need to go get some rest, man. You're going to be able- I'm going to go take a nap right now, actually. I might, I might lay down for a nice little nap, Do rejuvenate it. myself. Do it. And, hey, and, uh, again. What a year, Chinch. What a year, man. What a year for you and I, man. I really enjoyed it. For all the people that listen to us, thanks for coming along with us every day. This offseason, we're probably going to mix it up a little bit. Maybe not not every day, but every three days, every couple days or something like that we're going to do. Great, great point. And also, we're going to extend things. Sean Casey is not just Mr. Baseball. Sean Casey's Miss Captain America, as far as I'm concerned. So, <laughs> so we'll get some football guys on. We're going to get some uh, – yeah, we're gonna have the mental performance maybe, coaches on. We're gonna maybe any better at some point. <laughs> maybe any better. We'll see. We'll see. We're gonna have definitely have some. Uh, we're, yeah, we're gonna fi- we're gonna find some guests for the off season for yeah. all of our listeners. It'll be fun. But we can't for- talk baseball twelve months all the time. <laughs> I can't take. It. I can't either. I mean, it's fun, but I need to talk some other stuff too at some point. Yes, yes, you're a very eclectic person. You know, yeah. we want to yeah, see all the others. Yeah, yeah, I can't just do that. So. Nice. All right, man. What, what a great, great, great season change. Congrats. We did it. We did it again. And for everyone out there, like I said, thanks for tuning in for us. Please subscribe and download and tell all your friends to subscribe and download because it really does matter. If you want to keep seeing the content that we're putting out, we actually need that that to move a little bit. Goodbye, brother. Chinchy, talk to you, man. I will see you uh, maybe next week.